Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Nano War of Steel, Dislike the False Metal, out March 10th on Napalm Records. This album has 10 tracks, 48 minutes in length, and this is the band's 7 full length studio album. They are an Italian comedy inspired metal band. As far as the design is concerned, this album is straightforward, pretty much falling in line with the previous records. A lot of chaos, a lot of volatility, a record that doesn't follow patterns, that has ebbs and flows constantly changing, making it fluid, dynamic, but also very engaging, allowing you to concentrate more on the quality and details of the individual songs and the journeys that they offer within themselves, and not necessarily the overall big picture of where this record is trying to take you. As far as sound is concerned, it's really interesting to see the breakdown of this record. First of all, you have to understand the bands that influenced the songs. And when you look at the bands that influenced some of the songs on this record, you have bands like Ailstorm, Judas Priest, Hathaway, Scatman, Sabaton, Three Doors Down, Cherry Popping Daddies. These are just some of the bands that you can see clearly in the song style, in the song construction, in the lyrical content, in how the choruses were put together, in some cases even in the guest vocalists that they brought into this album. So creating songs that have those bands as the backdrop, as the influence, is one thing. But then creating tracks that sound like they, they could belong to the original bands, just with a funny and twisted lyrical content, but still lyrical content that pays in somewhat homage to the original lyrical content of those bands is extremely cool and it's what allows this album to be so rich not just rich in sound but rich in the experience that it gives an album that because of this dynamic of how the songs were put together the influence behind the songs and then how the songs sound makes it easier to digest when you look at italian folk metal for as good as that album was it felt more like a niche record you almost had to be Italian in order to understand some of the ideas, some of the sound, some of the lyrical content. You, you had to be focused and you had to be part of that world in order to really fully get the essence of the album and everything that that album had to offer to you. Otherwise, you're a little bit on the periphery and while my getting some of the details, you definitely were not getting the full picture. This album is completely different. This album is open to everybody. Anybody that listens to metal in general will be able to get most of the references musically on this album. Lyrically is a different story, but musically they're there for you, easy to detect, making the songs better, connecting them better with the original content, with the original influences, allows tracks like these to have more of a bite, to feel better together, and almost allowing you to forget the parody within them and just really realizing how good they are and how strong the whole band is as far as their musicianship is concerned. And once you start to break down the sound, two elements come into the forefront, the drums and guitars. I really like the drums on this album. I felt like overall they were very warm and if there's one element that gives some metal to this record, more often than not, it's definitely the drum sound. It's powerful, it has some thickness into it, not overly heavy, but heavy enough to create a sense of classic heavy metal, classic power metal when it needs to be, a little bit more hard rock when that is the influence that comes into the forefront, but all around, I felt like the drum sound was a little bit more stretched out, it felt a little bit more matured, a little bit more crafted. Same could be said for the guitar sound, from the acoustic guitars to the heavier guitars to the guitars that push the songs a little bit more forward. Uh, the guitar sound all around and execution is really well done on this album. It allows you to feel more of the metal side of the band and definitely of the record. While the volatility is there and while it's hard to place a connecting point between a song that sounds like something out of Cherry Pop and Daddies and then something that sounds uh, straight out of Sabaton, if you look at the guitar sound and you look at some of the connections that exist in terms of the execution and the impact that they have in the songs, that connection, while fainted, is still there. And that's why I said, while being a very volatile record, I still found this album to be a little bit better in terms of being cohesive, in terms of having a full idea in mind and then allowing that idea to flourish, grow roots, and grow branches, and go anywhere it wants to go. But the spinal cord of this album seems intact. The guitars and drums play a huge role in creating that spinal cord and giving a lot of life and a lot of richness to the overall sound experience, to the overall sound that this album has. Vocally, the same thing. 
I always love the way these guys approach the vocal performance on any given track. It's not about one size fits all, it's not about creating a sort of dynamic that becomes almost predictable, but it's rather going with the influences that they have behind the track. So if the song sounds like a power metal song or the influences behind are power metal driven, the vocal performance matches that same style, it matches that same genre. If the song has more of a hard rock feel, almost a country vibe, then they change the vocal approach ever so slightly in order to match better to that sound experience. And that's what you're gonna get on this record. You're gonna get 10 songs that sound different, have some similarities, but vocally, it, they are completely apart from one another because the vocal performance was completely geared to match the essence, the lyrics, the sound, the construction of the individual songs. And that is a key factor on any uh, Nano War of Steel record, but I felt like it was even more important on an album like this. Overall, this is my favorite Nano War of Steel record. A lot better than Italian folk metal because I felt like I missed the point on some of the songs, on some of the lyrical content. This album, for someone like me, it's extremely easy to digest, extremely easy to understand, easy to grasp. I can see where these songs originated. I can see what they're trying to make fun of on the lyrical side and on the musical side, allowing me to better grasp the overall album, making the overall listening experience more complete. Also from a, a just a pure craftsmanship, I felt like this record was better put together. Sound-wise, it felt stronger. Lyrically, it felt stronger, more mature, even though that's a hard thing to say about a Nano War of Steel record and the lyrics and their songs. But even when you look at the, um, at the vocals and the guest vocals that they had coming in, they were not just there to be there. They were there because they were needed for the style of song that they were putting together. Madeline's track has a little bit more of a symphonic feel to it and she fits perfect into that sound, into that experience. A song like Pasadena 1994 with Joaquin Broden, you can't do that track without him in it. So I just felt like overall, everything hit the mark. The sound hit the mark, the lyrics hit the mark, the topics hit the mark, the design hit the mark, the guest vocalist hit the mark. I mean, it's just a real perfect record all around by Nano War of Steel. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I gotta start with Sober, this is the opening track, and this is a pirate folk metal song that if you close your eyes and you forget about the lyrics for a minute and you're just listening to the song and the lyrics are kind of playing in the background, you honestly think that you're listening to a Nail Storm track. This is the antidote to Drink. This song is the complete opposite of Drink from a lyrical point of view, but very similar from a musical standpoint. A track that has ton of folkiness to it, has that pirate folky melodies to it, very bombastic over the top co chorus, the vocal choirs in the chorus add to that shantiness that this song has, that, that being in the bar, having drinks and singing along, even though this song is about being sober, the nature of the track is still the same as you would expect from a song, like I said, like Drink from Illstorm. So it's a real complete track that opens up the album and tells you exactly what this record is gonna be all about. It's gonna be about making fun of some genres, as they always do, but this time I felt that they went a little bit deeper and they were not afraid to hold back. And this song is the perfect example of just that. Next, we have Pasadena 1994 featuring Joaquin Broden. This is one of the best songs that I've heard in a very long time. First of all, it's better than anything that Sabaton has released since Bismarck. So let that sink in for a minute. Having Joaquin Broden on this track solidifies the quality of the song and it gives it a little bit of truthfulness in terms of how it sounds, how it feels, and how much it connects with the Sabaton sound. They took all the Sabaton cliches from the solos to the melodies. I mean, this song has bits and pieces of, uh, it feels to me of different Sabaton songs. Uh, you know, you could, you could see some of the riffs, some of the melodies, very similar. The, the solo approach, very similar. The chorus, some of the words in the song, uh, the, the way they finish the chorus with heroes, like there's just some key moments throughout this entire track that just make you believe that you're actually listening to a Sabaton song. And the way they broke the lyrics, this is about the World Cup final of 1994 between Italy and Brazil. Uh, Brazil won that, that World Cup on penalties. Roberto Baggio missed the penalty. Everybody that follows 
football knows the history of this game and what happened and this song broken down just the way Sabaton does their own tracks where you have a, a track that talks about the first half of the game talks about the second half of the game and then it breaks down the penalties one by one until the game is over it's absolutely phenomenal from this point of view because it feels like they're uh, uh, creating a song about a war that happened in 1994 between Brazil and Italy and technically it is kind of a, a battle it's not a war but it's a battle between those two countries at the World Cup stage so to create a song with this kind of dynamic with this kind of sound having Joaquin Broden in it it's phenomenal I mean this song is over the top one of the best songs i mean is the best song on the record by far but one of the best songs that they've ever created because it just has all the hallmarks of a sabaton track it even has walking in it but when you start to realize what the lyrical content is all about and what everything that goes into that lyrical content is doing you start to realize the genius behind creating such a song and creating such a well structured track that pays complete homage to sabaton their music but also proving that if you have a cool topic you can make any song sound like a sabaton song last but not least i want to mention metal boomer battalion this track also has a little bit of a sabaton vibe to it not as much obviously as pasadena 1994 but this track also has a little bit of metal crew it has a little bit of swedish pagans feel in it in terms of melodies in terms of how the chorus is arranged uh, but it has that power metal sound, that classic heavy metal sound that those two songs also have. And it's a really cool track. It's a metal track more so than anything else. Uh, it talks about boomers complaining on the internet, complaining about everything that's changing around them and not being happy about it. I mean, it's a very modern topic and I felt like they addressed the topic in a good way because they, they used a more classic heavy metal sound for a song that it's really about boomers and if they are metal heads they're definitely listening to songs that sound exactly like this one once again understanding the track understanding what do you want to do with the song musically what's the influence and what's going to be the lyrical content how can we match all of these worlds together as one in order for the track to work outside of the fact that it is a parody genius by nano war of steel this track hits the mark a thousand percent not as strong as Pasadena in 1994 but then again nothing is let me know your thoughts on Nano War of Steel dislike the false metal out March 10th on Napalm Records use the comment section below hit me up and I'll see you all at the next video